So I'd like to delve a little bit more deeply into palpation of the feet and what you're actually feeling when it comes to the, the pads of the feet, because I think they're just fascinating. So the pads should feel leathery, okay? If they feel brittle and uh, really dry, that can be a problem when it comes to traction. They can actually split and that can be quite painful. And if they're too soft, maybe from inactivity, then they don't give them the protection that the dog needs when they're out walking on uh, uneven surfaces and um, lumpy, bumpy ground that could, could be painful. Now you notice that there are actually four digital pads, okay? So that's under each toe. And then there's this heart-shaped pad, isn't it cute? That's called the metatarsal pad. And then finally, this non-weight-bearing gumdrop-shaped pad, which is the tarsal pad. So all the pads in general are for support and protection because dogs, again, stand on their toes, okay, on the very ends of their feet, not on their wrists or their heel bone in the back. The color of the pads varies. It can be black, pink, or white, and sometimes it can be a combination of all three. Now, one thing that I recently learned, which I think is fascinating, is that the uh, tissue here, which is skin, it's epidermis, okay, like our skin, is uh, it actually has fat in it, under it, that does not freeze, thus allowing a dog to go out in cold temperatures. Okay, but we always want to be mindful of too hot, too cold, because there are extremes that aren't tolerated well. So this heart-shaped pad actually provides a lot of cushioning, and it's similar to the palm of our hand. And the gum drop-shaped pad is not really all that utilized unless a dog is suddenly coming to a stop, it helps to stop them, or maybe going down a really steep slope, it helps to give them traction by kind of hooking and gripping there. Libby's foot shape is pretty typical. Um, there are a few different shaped dog feet in that depending on the position of the toes, if these toes are more medial and the paw is elongated, then that's called a hare foot. And if it's more rounded and kind of like this, doesn't that almost look like a tiger paw? So that's called a cat foot. So I would say Libby's paw represents a typical or standard type dog paw. Now, they have five potential digits in the front. One, number one, is actually the dew claw. And you can see hers a little long there, needs a little bit of trimming. Hard to see because it's white against the, the white. That's a non-weight bearing. It's kind of a vestigial toe. Some of them can be very pendulous. Some of them can be quite attached. Um, Oftentimes, breeders may remove dew claws, especially in the back, because they can get caught and cause trauma. And they're actually less common on the rear foot, but that's digit number one. And then as we count, this is number two, three, four, and five. The middle two toes are the primary weight-bearing toes. And the foot should be very malleable to be able to articulate on all kinds of surfaces and maintain that grip and traction. So when it comes to Libby's back foot, it's very similar to her front foot. We get, again have the potential dew claw here, which she does not have. I don't know if it was removed when she was a puppy or if she didn't have it at all when she was born. Then we have digits two, three, four, and five with the digital pads underneath each one, the heart-shaped metatarsal pad for cushioning. All the pads of the foot are for support and cushion. And then unlike the front foot, there is no gumdrop shaped um, tarsal pad up here. Some dogs have them, I think I've seen uh, over the years, but that's more unusual when it comes to the rear foot. 
So not much different when it comes to the back foot versus the front foot, but the feet are so, so important in your dog's everyday function. They have to be able to maneuver their surroundings. They're used for traction. They're used for gripping. They're used for support. They are their shoes and their means of locomotion. So please don't neglect your dog's feet or toenails. Really important. Thanks a lot.